Is it easy to own a Florida vacation rental property? You see people on TV look at three properties to buy, and within 30 minutes, they own a place to go on vacation, and then they rent it out for profit for the rest of the year. Well, it isn't that easy. This video is not how to determine if a property is a good investment or not. We are not concerned with things like ROI, cash flow, or cap rate. We're more concerned about what are the areas where they are permitted and what do I need to do to have a short-term rental? And are terms such as Airbnb, vacation rental, and short-term rental all the same? Well, what's the definition of a vacation rental in Florida? According to state statutes 509.242, vacation rental is any unit or group of units in a condominium or cooperative or individually or collectively owned single family, two family, three family or four family house or dwelling unit that is also a transient public lodging establishment, but that is not a timeshare project. So what is a transient establishment? According to section 509.013 of the Florida State Statutes, a transient public lodging establishment means any unit, group of units, dwelling, building, or group of buildings within a single complex of buildings, which is rented to guests for more than three times in a calendar year for periods of less than 30 days or one calendar month, whichever is less, or which is advertised or held out to the public as a place regularly rented to guests. Got that? Some places like Brevard County, the town of Grand Valcaria, or the city of Satellite Beach calls them resort dwellings. So what do you need? On a state level, you need two things. First, you will need a license from the Division of Business and Professional Regulation, also known as the Beeper, under the Division of Hotels and Restaurants, also known as H&R, if you're going to rent out as a transient establishment. Remember, that means something that's less than 30 days. There's a different application for condos versus dwelling. What's a dwelling? By that, they mean single-family homes, townhomes, duplexes, triplexes, and quadruplexes. I'll put some links in the description below. One of the things you may want to get from um, the state is a brochure, like this one. It's, for, it's your vacation rental guide. Very informative as to exactly what you need to set up a, a vacation rental. They also have a, a video there. If you're applying for a condo, it's a separate form. If you're applying for a dwelling, it's a separate form. But on a state level, if you are renting out for 30 days or more, you do not need a state license. However, you still need to collect the Florida Tourist and Development Tax. And this is on anything that is rented six months or less. Over six months, you don't have to worry about any taxes at all. So how much tax do you have to collect? Well, the state sales tax is 6%, plus any discretionary surtax, which is the county taxes or municipal taxes. Now, in Brevard County and in Indian River County, that's 1%. Plus, you have to add the tourist development tax. This is 5% in Brevard County and 4% in Indian River. So for totals, in Brevard County, it's a total of 12% tax, and in Indian River, it's 11% tax. You also have to have a written agreement to name an agent who will work on your behalf, not only to rent the property, but to collect and remit the taxes. Yes, you can name yourself. Note that within certain municipalities, um, they want to know an agent or responsible person or responsible party that must be on call 24-7. Why? Because they need somebody to uh, answer any problems if there's a police call, a fire call, or um, if they have inspections, you have to show the fire inspector or the building inspector before you get your permits. And, and, but each municipality is different. We'll get into that in another video. Back on the state level, your agent must be registered in each county that you have a short-term rental property. You can list multiple properties in the same county on one application. But if you own short-term rental properties in different counties, you must have separate registration in each county. Remember, if you're using a booking service like Evolve, VRBO, or Airbnb, many of them will act as your agent to collect and report these taxes for you. 
They also want to have a federal employee identification number, an FEIN, or a social security number, or an individual taxpayer's identification number, and that's required for each property owner. I'll put the link in the description below so you'll know exactly where to register for a Florida tax account number. Tax returns and payments are due on the first and late after the 20th day of the month following each reporting period. Even if you have no taxes due, you still have to file a report before the 20th. If you file your return and pay taxes late, there's a penalty of 10% of the amount of taxes due, but not less than $50 may be charged. The $50 minimum penalty applies even if no taxes are due and you forget to file. The tourist development tax is reported and paid directly to the county in Brevard or in Indian River. However, the 6% sales tax and the 1% discretionary sales tax is reported and paid to the Florida Department of Revenue, the DOR. Now to complicate things a little bit more, Brevard County is paid through the Brevard County Tax Collector and can be paid online. Where Indian River County, it's paid through the Indian River Clerk of the Court, either in person or by mail. They're not set up to do online. Also be aware that you need to be registered and pay a local business tax. If your vacation rental is outside of any city limit, you need to visit your county tax collector. If your rental property is located within the city limits, then you'd visit that particular local municipality. Not all cities and towns require a local business license, like Palm Bay, Malabar, or Rockledge. I'll include in the links below for Brevard County and Indian River County, both where you apply for your business license and also for your tourist tax. Well, that covers the state and county licensing and tax requirements. Let's see what qualifies a property and what you need to do in Indian River County versus Brevard County. By this, I mean for properties under county jurisdiction and not within any city limits. For example, in Satellite Beach, it's possible to have a Satellite Beach address, but the property is outside the city limits and therefore under county rule. This happens a lot in towns like Rio Beach or Melbourne Beach and others. These individual municipalities will be covered in future videos. I think Brevard County is much stricter than Indian River County. First off, unlike the state where they consider vacation rentals to be anything less than 30 days, Brevard County wants to regulate rentals considered as resort dwellings. So what is a resort dwelling? Resort dwellings means any single family dwelling or multiple family dwelling unit which is rented for periods of less than 90 days or three calendar months, which is less. So you can see the difference between the state being 30, the county is 90. What I got out of this is that you're under their thumb for anything rented less than 90 days. So where can you have a resort dwelling? Remember, we're talking about Brevard County only. You have to know the zoning classification where the property is located. It can be zoned either in a permitted use zone, a permitted use with conditions, or a conditional use zone getting complicated. So there's 19 zoning classifications that have resort dwelling as permitted uses. Sounds like a lot, right? It's not. I'll show you in a, in a bit. If it's zoned as permitted with conditions, there are location conditions and those location standards are resort dwellings shall be restricted to parcels that are A, developed with a non-conforming multifamily residential use and B, located within a multifamily track in a PUD or RPUD, or located in a single family track if submitted as part of a preliminary development plan application and approved by the Board of County Commissioners in a public hearing. Crazy. Then they list a bunch of performance standards, such as parking, maximum occupancy, noise limitations, and management responsibilities. Okay, that was permitted with conditions. Now, how about locations where the property is classified as a conditional use? The location standards are almost impossible to qualify. They are based on location relative to Highway A1A. This would be located beachside on the Barrier Island side. There's very little land between Highway A1A and Atlantic Ocean. Per the ordinance, the location standards require resort dwellings shall be restricted to parcels of land that are A, located east of State Road A1A, but not abutting any single-family detached uses or lots zoned for single-family detached use, or B, has to be located on the west side and having direct frontage on State Road A1A, 
but not abutting any single family detached uses or lots zoned for single family detached use. There's not that many pieces of property that meet those qualifications. Then they list similar performance conditions such as occupancy standards, parking, and stuff like that. Take a look at this county map. There's a lot of red, meaning those areas are not permitted. A few areas with yellow, meaning they're permitted with those conditions. And those conditions we can't meet. And I see very, very little green areas. The gray areas on the map are for incorporated municipalities. Some of those are also very strict and some of those are very easy to work with. Like I said, we'll be looking into these in future videos. Indian River County seems much easier to work with. Let's see how they define a vacation rental. Vacation rental is any residential dwelling which is rented or leased more than three times in a calendar year to a tenant, individual, group of individuals, or a party for a period of less than 30 days, or, or which is advertised or held to the public as a dwelling which may be regularly rented or leased for periods of less than 30 days. You still need to be licensed with the state to beeper and registered for a Florida tax account number with the Florida Department of Revenue. You need a business license with the county to have a local business tax receipt, LBTR, and register with the county clerk of the court for the paying of your tourist development tax. Indian River County has a 28-page vacation rental information packet, and I'll put the link down in the description below. Good news? It's not restricted to any zone. It can be in any residential zone, and there's no minimum stay. Indian River County does have some restrictions on occupancy and noise regulations, and you still have to have somebody named as an agent be responsible. But the biggest thing I got here is that Indian River County is not restricted to any zone. It can be in any residential zone, and there's no minimum stay. You can stay for a week, you can stay for a month. We'll get into individual cities and towns in future videos. Stay tuned. If you made it this far in this video, you probably like what you're seeing. In that case, hit that subscribe button below and you'll be notified whenever I put up a new video. If you're looking to buy or sell in either Brevard or Indian River counties, call me, text me, or leave me a comment below. I'll be glad to help you out.